Okay, for our next chapter, we are going to study splines. Um, a spline is a function, and basically, if you're given a bunch of data points, you could think of them as dots in the xy axis. What a spline is, is a function that goes through every one of those points. And it's used for uh, interpolation, predicting a value. For example, if you know that you've got two points and their values are this and this, if you take a point in the middle uh, in between these two x values, the value is probably going to be somewhere in between the heights, the, the value um, of the first and the second one. So it's used for interpolation. The first very simple type of spline we're going to talk about, um, spline interpolation, is a, a degree one spline. And a function s for spline is a spline of degree one if all these three are true. The first one is just simply saying that it's domain, it is the closed bounded interval from A to B. Number two, it's gotta be continuous on that entire interval. And number three, there is a partition, which we've seen this many, many times before, going from A to B, we'll call A x zero, we'll call B x n, and you've got a series of x points in between them, um, such that in between x0 and x1, they're connected by a straight line. The, the, the y values are, the xy pairs are. And between x1 and x2, another straight line. And then another straight line, all the way. So between every subinterval from xi to xi plus 1, it's just a straight line connecting the two data points. <clears throat> and by the way, these points don't need to be equally spaced as we've seen at, at, uh, most of the time in the past. Okay, let's uh, continue on with, um, with, with a, a, a degree one spline. Okay, so you're given n plus one data points because we're going from x0, y0, all the way up to x in y in, so that's n plus one data points. And then all I'm saying there is that the, the x values are either in increasing order or they're in decreasing order. And if they're not, just sort them that way. And we're gonna interpolate the data to a linear spline. So let's say we've got a bunch of data points. And here's x zero, y zero, and here's x one, y one. I have to connect that with a line segment. So, then we've got, you know, we could have a whole bunch of other points between one and, I call this one x sub i, just kind of a generic middle point, but it is connected to x i plus one. And then I went all the way to the last, from x, x n minus one, y n minus one, to x n, y n. So basically, I've only plotted the first segment, the last segment, and kind of one that's, that's generic, just placed in the middle somewhere. <clears throat> okay, so what we're going to do is go back to pre-calculus for a minute. And remember when you have the slope of a line and you're, you have one point, you can use the point-slope formula to get the equation of the line that has that slope and goes through the point. Well, the equation is y minus y zero equals m times x minus x zero. This is the equation of the line that has slope m and passes through the point x zero, y zero. So that's gonna be the basis of what we're doing now. So let's now, let's say we have, um, y minus y zero equals, well the slope between two consecutive points is just rise over run. So I, I, I call that um, um, y one minus y zero over x one minus x zero. Let's go specifically for this line right here. <clears throat> That's the slope of that line. Well, that's the slope, then times x minus x zero. 
So now what I'm going to do is say y equals add y0 to both sides, and I get y0 plus m, or plus y1 minus y0 over x1 minus x0 times x minus x0. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take the y and call it f of x. And I'm going to call it f1 of x because that's only the function, the linear function, between this point and that point. But that is essentially um, the, the, it is exactly the equation of the line between this point and this point. Okay, so, for example, let's actually, before we write it down generally, let's write down f2. f2 of x would, be, would start at uh, y1 plus y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's the, that would be the second segment wherever it is, the slope of the second segment, x minus x1. <clears throat> now, we're defining a piecewise function. When I put all of these f1s all the way down to fn, or maybe I will, uh, yeah, I'll just go down to fn. fn of x is going to be, what's, what's this y value going to be? Let's see, it's 1 less than the index there, so it's going to be n minus 1. Plus yn minus yn minus 1 over xn minus xn minus 1 <clears throat> times x minus xn minus 1. So we've kind of covered with this dot 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 all of the functions, but we need to specify when you define a piecewise function like this where it's valid. So this one is valid when x is in between x0 and x1. This is the function you use. I'll put a comma there. This is the function you use when x is in between x1 and x2. And the very last one, well, that's valid between um, xn minus 1 and xn. So we've covered all of the bases. <clears throat> and in the, in the next video, we will um, write the very simple pseudocode to implement this, uh, which you'll do for a, a homework assignment.